Hey people, voice talking to you, and this is an intriguing little game called Rekka. Rekka is a third-person open-world RPG adventure game heavily based in Slavic folklore. We play as Baba Yaga's apprentice, traveling the world in her giant walking house while training to become a witch of the woods. If you think this game might be for you, and you'd like to check it out for yourself, there will be a link for you in the description where you can download this demo for free. Alongside that, you'll also find a link to my Twitch channel in case you'd like to hang out with us when we test these games out live. In this game, we play as the titular Rekka, an odd, reserved girl with unusual abilities. The story of Rekka, both the character and the game as a whole, are still mostly a mystery to me, even after completing the demo. What I do know is that as technology is advancing, witchcraft and its associated beliefs are beginning to wane in the dark countryside. At the same time, however, something is beginning to stir the old gods again, and Rekka's awakening powers move her to seek out the moss-covered home of the old crone who was once the feared and respected witch known as Baba Yaga. The old witch claims to have been waiting for a long time to meet someone like Rekka, and after a demonstration of her powers, she agrees to take the girl under her wing and teach her the ways of witchcraft. The backstory of both Rekka and Baba Yaga are both apparently marked by great tragedy and hardships, but beyond that, the demo refuses to elaborate. I don't blame the devs for doing this, as spilling all the secrets right off the bat would ruin the fun, but it does mean I can't really comment on how good the story will be or the quality of the writing, so bear that in mind. Visually though, this game is breathtaking. Don't be fooled by its somewhat simple textures and hand-painted style. The world of Rekka is absolutely stunning, and surprisingly hardware-intensive on max resolution settings. Gleaming rays of light break through clouds and the canopy of the forest and really blends well with the title's sunset color palette. In an open-world game like this, visuals this striking are perfect for encouraging players to explore and see all there is to see. There's also a surprising level of detail in character outfits and little props around homes that make them not only unique to the setting, but also different enough to seem lived in. I actually spent quite a bit of time in this demo just wandering around and admiring the scenery, and can you really blame me? Now I do have a couple, but only a couple, of concerns about the open world mechanics of this game. The first is a matter of variety, and though I do love the look of the first area of this game, it could very quickly become a bit overdone if they all look just the same. I don't imagine that'll happen, but I'm hoping for some changes in mood between the sunny colors of the demo to maybe more dark and woody colors later on, something a bit more spooky and witchy. My second concern is less visual and more mechanical. The important locations of the game are all pretty close together, and even Baba Yaga's house is visible from the main village. This is just a gripe, but it feels odd that this secretive and mysterious old crone would want to be effectively right at the edge of town. At the same time, there is a lot of empty, unused space that I noticed when wandering through the forest. I would recommend solving both of these problems by spreading out major locations just a bit and including some additional secrets or points of interest to fill in some of those empty clearings. Those concerns aside, the animations and effects in this title are really something. Sure, the movement is really fluid and there's a good bit of detail to even how Rekka's clothes and hair are blown by the wind, but the magic effects are the real showstopper. We only get to perform one ritual in the demo, helping Baba Yaga resurrect her dead chicken hunt, but the display is something spectacular. That is wild. This incredible show not only boasts of Baba Yaga's startling magical prowess, but also makes me want to see what kind of magic we can learn to perform in time. Then again, such a yearning for power is probably the very reason witches tend to lean towards the evil end of the alignment chart. Despite this game's bright, hopeful veneer, there's an unmoving sense of darkness beneath it all. She may be a rather shy and timid girl, but Rekka is still a burgeoning witch, and under the tutelage of one of history's most feared practitioners of the dark arts. Baba Yaga even directly says that she'll encourage our growth whether we embrace the darkness or the light, meaning there might be a couple of very different ways Rekka could decide to use her gifts. The Old Witch also makes repeated mention of the tragedies and pain in both her and Rekka's past, and while I can't say for sure, I imagine these will be revealed and tie into the story later on. The two witches aren't the only ones touched by darkness, however. Dealing with famine, plague, evil monsters, and old gods is the trade of a witch, and a grim reality is never too far beneath the surface. While the sunny visuals and jovial writing remind me very fondly of an old fairy tale, the darker tones and Slavic imagery are remarkably reminiscent of The Witcher. In fact, one notable quest we undertake in the demo is to find the missing friend of one of the villagers who's disappeared into the forest. When we do find him, we learn that he was hung from a tree and left to rot by travelers he met on the road. Well, that's dark. Overall, a very Witcher-sounding resolution to that quest. Very unlike The Witcher, however, I doubt that combat will end up being a part of the gameplay. I could certainly see some stressful encounters dealing with spirits or monsters, but open combat is probably off the table. 
both because it's never introduced in the demo and because I don't really feel like this is that kind of game. In that case, you're probably wondering what kind of gameplay Rekka does have going for it. Well, I've already mentioned the exploration, but gathering materials, crafting, puzzle solving, questing, and base building are also frequent mechanics the player will be encountering, though to what degree, I'm not entirely certain. Unfortunately, we only get to see the very tip of the iceberg with Rekka's magical abilities, which only really allow her to light small flames with her fingers and to influence crows. The crows are the far more interesting of these two abilities, and commanding a flock of these birds is how we harvest materials, letting them snatch up nearby items like berries, mushrooms, wood, and lots of other stuff. Overall, this is a really cool and satisfying gathering mechanic, and I really like the visuals for it. We can also send one of our birds flying forward like a dart, which we can use to strike targets like bags of loot hidden in trees to knock them down. Speaking of loot, we do have gold, and we meet a trader right at the beginning of the game. Though we can't do it in this demo, I'm assuming trading will be part of the finished game. Aside from the tasks given to us by Baba Yaga, most of the other quests we carry out in the demo are pretty mundane. Helping a woman carry her pumpkins into her barn, finding a missing baby goat, and cooking soup for hungry villagers with ingredients we forest with our bird friends. I won't complain about these quests because they're very light and domestic and include lots of adorable interactions with cats and baby goats. This is the best game ever. Look at this. Incredible. 10 out of 10 gameplay right there. But I do hope for some more interesting content in the future. And the rewards for these quests aren't impressive, but they're perfectly satisfying and often include new outfits for Rekka or decorations for your house. As I mentioned before, base building is an aspect of this game, though I think it's more of a personalization thing than an actual survival mechanic. Baba Yaga's giant chicken hut, whom Rekka affectionately calls Hut Hut, that's adorable by the way, shows a fondness for Rekka and learns to heed her commands. Hut Hut serves as our mobile base, and the player can use gathered materials to build their own custom witch hut on its back. The building system isn't perfect, but it's pretty intuitive and has an impressive level of customization and detail with interlocking meshes that hide protruding wall corners and make everything look nice and neat. Frankly, I wish a lot more survival games had this kind of mechanic. That said, the collision for many decorations, wall hangings in particular, need to be adjusted so they aren't floating a foot away from the wall. Your hut hut gives you a place to store items, cook, craft, change clothes, and otherwise do your witchy workings. The UI interfaces for storage is remarkably detailed, letting you drop items into actual partitions inside chests and shelves. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, actually the entire player UI is pretty awesome. Set up like Rekka's journal with a really nice mini-map and quest layout, overall it's just a really solid player interface. Of course, and as I mentioned, Hut Hut is mobile, and while seated in the ritual skeleton chair, Rekka can command Hut Hut to stand and move. Walking your giant chicken hut through the forest, knocking down trees, and smashing through obstacles is a really awesome way for your character to get around. And it makes your base as much of a vehicle as it is a home. Given what I've seen of the demo, I'm really not quite sure where the story of this game is headed. I'm not super concerned though, because the characters we meet, though few, are really interesting. Rekka is surprisingly endearing for how little she speaks, and I'm curious about this great potential she holds. Even Baba Yaga has her moments of dark humor and a certain level of maternal affection towards Rekka, even if she did threaten to eat us once or twice. The gameplay is actually what I was left with the most questions about. I mean, are we going to gain new abilities and magic skills as we progress? What kind of quests will we be undertaking? Is it all going to be chores and soup, or will there be some real high-stakes witchy business to deal with, like an outbreak of disease or enraged forest spirits? Will we have a hand in how Rekka's powers develop, or was that just flavor text? On the other hand, I enjoyed performing simple tasks around the village and helping people out more than I thought I would. There's something about this game, maybe it's the delightful visuals and relaxing music, that makes it unusually calming and enjoyable to spend time doing meaningless activities like decorating your hut and finding adorable animals to pet. That is the cutest goddamn thing I've seen all week. And on the story side of things, we don't really know all that much about Baba Yaga or Rekka, but I'm very interested to find out more. Not only is the dynamic between the two really comedic, but something about the way in which the timid Rekka wields the immense power of old gods without realizing the utter chaos she could cause with that kind of magic is quite amusing. Despite how uncertain I am of the game's developing mechanics, I'm surprisingly excited to see how this game turns out. Then again, I'm just the voice in your head. So what do you think about Rekka? Do you think this game will stick to lighter fantasy, or do you hope it delves into the darker side of witchcraft? You think the gameplay will be interesting, or is it too slow for your liking? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leaving a like really helps me out, and subscribing is the best way to support the channel and keep new videos coming your way, because I put out new stuff every single week. 
Thanks so much for listening to me today, and you'll be hearing from me again real soon. Woohoo! Witchcraft! <laughs>